第三十五对演讲题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。In this flourishing modern society, having international adaptability is now very important for the global citizens, as the young generation has a vital voice in the international community. This allows us to influence the world with our novel thoughts. So don't you feel curious? About what the younger Taiwanese generation can do to increase our international mobility. Good morning, honorable judges, ladies, and gentlemen. Today, we're going to show you some activities that young people can do, not only to educate themselves but also to promote Taiwan to the world. Now, let's welcome Peter to share his experience about international volunteering. Thank you, Isabel. Last summer vacation, a special program attracted my attention. It was about teaching English to children in the Philippines. Though the Philippines is a newly industrialized country, it has extreme disparity between the poor and rich. People who live in suburban areas have fewer opportunities to get a proper education. During the project, we planned several English lessons in hopes of giving those children a memorable experience. However, it was much tougher to teach than we realized. After interacting with those kids in English, we gained not only the experience but also the joy of seeing the big, wide smiles appear on their faces. And I realized a smile is a language. That everyone understands. It was such a special experience, and I was so glad to have such a distinct summer vacation. Now let's hear from Summer about a creative organization. Thank you, Peter. Last year, my sister Fiona joined the 2016 ICYE program. ICYE, known as International Cultural Youth Exchange, is a nonprofit. A non-governmental organization which offers intercultural learning and international volunteering opportunities. It not only gives aid to those in need, but also promotes youth mobility. My sister told me she decided to step out of her comfort zone and volunteer in a healthcare center in Edinburgh, Scotland. During her two months of service, her horizons expanded. During her departure, she most graciously left her host with a heartfelt "xiexie." She then realized how crucial cross-cultural communication is. As a result, she learned to break the boundaries between people between different nations and exchange cultures and languages. Listening to her experience makes me want to join the program. I believe volunteering in foreign nations can build my ability. To become a better global villager, as well as learn to manage international affairs. Now to you, Terry. Thank you, Summer. In order to promote mutual understanding between the youth of Taiwan and other nations, the youth ambassadors have been gathering the young generation together to connect the world with the unique culture of Taiwan. It offers young people opportunities to engage in. And deepen their understanding of international affairs. In this program, they learn to introduce and promote Taiwan's soft power on the international stage. For instance, the youth ambassadors visited Singapore this year for exchange, study, volunteer service, and to further cultural diplomacy. Through these intercultural communications. The distance between the participating countries will be abridged. Furthermore, participating in these activities will provide opportunities to increase our international mobility and to handle international affairs. Now back to you, Isabel. Thank you, Terry. The younger generations, like us, need to learn how to express different thinking about the global community. With our unique perspectives. We need to learn how to increase our international mobility and to strengthen our ability to handle international affairs, and we can do so 
by joining the above mentioned activities. Through meaningful employment that combines life and job skills, and also by encouraging creative expression. We can not only broaden our horizon, but also promote our social and personal <coughs> development. And we, we believe, believe by the efforts and dedication of the Taiwanese youth, we can use our unique perspectives and become responsible global villagers. Thank you. 第三十四对演讲的题目是 Number One. 计时开始。Taiwan, my beloved homeland, was named Ia Formosa by a group of Portuguese sailors in 16th century. Hundred years later, our team is proud to to introduce its features. To begin with, we are thrilled to find out the word Formosa is acronym. Of things that Taiwan has been praised for. F stands for delicious food. O stands for the ocean that surrounds the island. R stands for diversified religious activities, and M stands for advanced medical technology. Another O stands for orchid that highlights Taiwan's agricultural miracle. And S stands for spectacular scenery, and finally, A stands for multi-ethnic aborigines. And now, I am going to invite my team members to elaborate more respectively. Taiwan is situated in East Asia, with China to the west, Japan to the northeast, and Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia to the south. Make her an ideal Asian and. Asian Pacific counterpart. Moreover, Taiwan is surrounded by the South China Sea to the south, Pacific Ocean to the east, East China Sea to the north, and Taiwan Strait to the west. Being engulfed by ocean, prospers Taiwan's fishing industry and forms a close relationship between ocean and Taiwanese people. Besides, Taiwan's, Taiwan's agricultural technology is world recognized. For example. Taiwan is famous for its tea culture. Taiwanese tea industry has been well known around the world since 19th century, and we are constantly inventing new types of tea to reach higher quality and success. Another example is Taiwanese orchid. Last year, a Cattleya orchid from a Taiwanese-run orchid nursery in England won the Silver Gilt Medal at the annual London Orchid Show. Held by the Royal Horticultural Society. In short, Taiwan can share its agricultural technology with other countries. Now, let me tell you more outstanding features of Taiwan. BBC Travel Program has listed five reasons why the travelers from around the world would like to pay a visit to Taiwan: cuisine, scenery, hot spring, temples, and museums. In other words. Taiwan is not only a place with mouth-watering foods, but also is a place with much unique scenery. And many Taiwanese overseas admit that what they missed the most was the is the nostalgic hometown flavor. And foods can not only feed people, but also can connect people worldwide. For example, Ro, one of Asia's 50, top 50 restaurants is run by a premium Taiwanese born Michelin chef, Andre Zhang, provides premium world class French cuisine, cuisines. And many vis visitors from around the world uh, visited Taipei because of this restaurant. Through this example, we can see that delicacies in Taiwan definitely increase the visibility of Taiwan. Wow, that sure is a great sales pitch. I definitely will go to the night market this evening and taste those local delicacies. Apart from food, Taiwan is also well known for its natural wonders. Taiwan now possesses up to nine national parks, each with its unique ecological system and wild species. We can appreciate the landscapes from beach coastlines and from subtropical forests to towering mountains. We may also have the opportunity to say hi to the precious wild species 
such as Formosan black bear, landlocked salmons, and so on. By providing ecological tour, Taiwan can serve as a hub for animal protection and for ecological conservation. In addition, Taiwan is also world acclaimed for its medical technologies. We can share our medical know-how to other nations and promote the well-being of the whole humankind. For example, dentists from the Taipei Veteran General Hospital have exhibited their advanced technologies to the doctors from the Southeast Asian nations. We, Taiwan, may look like a small potato on the world map, but we do contribute to the world a lot, and we do have many uniqueness. With the features we presented previously, Taiwan sure has its spotlight on the world stage. Thank you. The number three. Good morning, everyone. Taiwan, a country located in the Western Pacific, is the most beautiful place that I've ever seen. When it comes to Taiwan, it may easily pop out to people's mind. Purple city, world famous cuisine, and vicious people. Therefore, if I have an opportunity to visit friends from target nation, I would like to make a cultural tour for three days to let them know Taiwan better. And deal with rich culture, world famous cuisine, and religious people. In this three-day trip, first we will go to Kaohsiung City. First of all, we will go to Meinong, one of the districts situated at the north side of Kaohsiung City. Surrounded by mountain, Meinong is a town featuring Hakka culture. We can directly feel Hakka's bridge by such as oil paper umbrella, flat noodles, and mashed tea. In a cr uh, above this, Meinong is a very, very special place because there are many cultures that we didn't see as overseas. In addition to Meinong, the trip to Kaohsiung will never end without a feast in Kaohsiung's night market. Night market is a foodist paradise. As a result, I will bring my friends to Liu He Night Market, which is the most famous night market in Kaohsiung. There are a variety of Taiwan's local food, such as oyster omelette, permutic, and the most famous one, stinky tofu. I would like to bring them to the night market, and maybe they will love all of this fantastic food and bring their family or friends to come to Taiwan in the future. The second day, it's time to show my friends the culture of indigenous people. Hence, I'll bring them to the Formosa Aboriginal Cultural Village, the largest outdoor museum of Taiwan situated high in the hills above the summer lake in Nanto. In this village, visitors can deeply perceive the history and cultural identity of Taiwanese nine principal Aborigine tribes through the architecture, handicrafts, and exhibitions which are displayed. In addition to these exhibitions, they can directly come in touch with the lifestyles and customs of native Taiwanese through the special events held by tribal people in this village. In specific periods, people of each tribe will hold festivals to worship their deities, ancestors, and nature. As the descendants of each tribe do dancing and singing, the histories and stories of each tribe will come to life and become permanent by the sharing with visitors around the world. Finally, on the last day in Taiwan, 
I will let her introduce Chinese culture to my foreign friends, since Han Chinese and Chinese culture play an important role in the development of Taiwanese culture. For this purpose, there is no better way to spend a day in National Palace Museum. There are almost 700,000 pieces of imperial artifact and artwork waiting for you to see. In this museum, visitors can appreciate the most high quality collections from Neolithic age to the modern. With the help of audio touring system available in various languages, visitors can enjoy the classic atmosphere of the Chinese culture through the collections of paintings, metalwork, and carvings. By the three-day trip, I hope that people can feel the charm of Taiwan and the bridge for interaction can be built. Thank you. 第二十八队演讲的题目是 Number One， 计时开始。Good morning, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. When you left your home today to hop in your car and come here. Were you looking over your shoulder? The last time you were in a crowded place, like a mall or a train station, did you feel nervous or fearful? Chances are your answer would be no. And why is that? You wonder, because you are living one of the safest countries in the world. It's a fact. Taiwan is ranked as the third safest country in the world. According to the Crime Index 2017, compiled by Nubio.com, other surveys from various organizations around the world consistently rank Taiwan in the top five. Are we surprised? Well, don't be. The reasons and the benefit of being such a safe place to reside are quite obvious. Now, my friend Quinton is going to explain to you why terrorism. The plague of the 21st century, which has reared its ugly head in every corner of the globe, simply doesn't exist here. ISIS, Al Qaeda, Taliban, Abu Sayyaf—any of these names ring a bell? They have extended their reach to every continent, but not here, not in Taiwan. Why is that? Simply put. We just don't have any enemies. Taiwan is not a target on any of the just-mentioned groups' radars, and as such, this is one of a few countries which can boast about its safety from terrorism. Now, that's not to say we can let our guard down. Our police forces, in conjunction with the Coast Guard and the NIA, work tirelessly, hand in hand, to keep our nation safe. From potential threats, one crucial benefit of this safety is immigration. It's no secret that Taiwan's low birth rate and aging population—it's an ever-growing crisis. What better way to welcome new immigrants, some fleeing terrorism, than to offer them a safe haven where they can start a new life? Now, LB is going to tell you why you can walk through the city at 2 a.m. Alone and still feel safe. About a year ago, my Canadian English teacher asked me a very strange question. He said, "Why is it that none of our 7-Elevens or our family marts have bulletproof glass? Aren't they afraid of getting robbed?" And I remember I gave him a funny look and quickly replied, "No." And he's like, "What do you mean no?" And I said, "It." Just doesn't happen. Violent crime almost doesn't exist here. Of course, one of the reasons for this is our gun laws. If you take the American argument that, oh, we need them for protection, well, that just doesn't apply here because no one has them. Now, yes, from time to time you hear about a gangster shooting another gangster. But you never hear about Joe Nobody getting robbed at gunpoint. We have become a very civil country which respects personal freedom. So yes, I have no fear walking down to my local seven for a midnight snack. 
Now, Grace is going to explain why living in a safe country is on the minds of all in the international community. Much like we mentioned at the beginning of this speech, do you really want to live in a place where you find yourself always looking over your shoulder? Holding your bag tightly for fear of being robbed? Of course not. Just to look at the state of the world we live in. There are shootings every day in the United States. Terrorists driving through crowds in London and other parts of Europe. The Middle East is rife with terrorist groups and suicide bombings. To the south of us in the Philippines, government forces are fighting terrorists as we stand before you today. But not here. Not in Taiwan. As my friend mentioned earlier, we, as a nation, must turn to immigration to solve our population crisis. In a world where more and more people are living their lives in fear, we simply don't. I'd like to quote a famous Roman statesman, Marcus Cicero, when he said, the safety of the people shall be the highest law. This is the issue on the minds of all citizens of humanity, and this is what Taiwan has to offer the world. Thank you. The 24th speaker's speech is number one. Begin. Taiwan is not a popular destination for foreign tourists, especially compared to some of its near neighbors. Such as Japan, China, Hong Kong, and Thailand. Let's say Taiwan still has some excellent attractions and is a worthwhile place to visit. While the cities in Taiwan are often crowded, there are many beautiful temples and an extraordinary array of delicious food to be discovered. Therefore, in terms of promoting Taiwan internationally, I think delicious and various food are Taiwan's standout quality. plays a major important role in Taiwanese culture, and the small island's overwhelming number of delicious eats means that Taiwan is quickly cementing itself as one of the delicious food. Taiwan also has many of Taiwan also has many of delicious food. Most cities and towns in Taiwan are individually famous for their special foods. For example, Yilan is famous for emoji. A kind of sweet pastry that is usually run like sun. Lugang is famous for its almost omelette, almost. Jiayi is famous for its turkey rice, which contains bits of fresh turkey mixed with fresh steamed rice and pickled radish. In addition to local food, Taiwan isn't known as the fruit kingdom for nothing. Although a high percentage of fruit vendors sell imported produce, Taiwan is naturally a subtropical zone and an ideal land of growing all kinds of tropical fruits, such as star fruits, wax apples, Buddha's head, dragon fruits, and mangoes. Second, it goes without saying that the country stand out is our festival and culture. Taiwan is highly diversified in terms of religious belief, with the practice of Buddhism, Taoism, Mormonism, Christianity, the Unification Church, Islam, and Hinduism as well as native sects, such as Iguan Dao and others. Taiwan not only respects traditional faiths, but also opens its arms to other types of religious thought from the outside.
besides modern Chinese culture, when Chinese, Australian nation, Japanese, and Western influence, because Taiwan never experienced communist oppression, visitors have opportunity to witness traditional religion practice and ancient customs that have disappeared from mainland China, and in recent years, they have become a major driver of tourist industry. Several major celebrations represent Taiwan, such as the Lantern Festival, Chinese New Year, the Ghost Festival, the Moon Festival, Temple Paras, and Mozo's Birthday. I believe local, cheap, delicious, various food and diversified culture is then are in Taiwan because it's hard to see the same in other countries. Therefore, internationally, in terms of promoting our culture, these are what we should try to advertise of our country. Number two. When we were kids, our parents often reminded us to be polite and say please, thank you, and sorry all the time. And now that we're all grown up, when it comes to interactions between countries, international etiquette becomes more indispensable than ever. International etiquette is about building relationships with other people. It's not about the rules and regulations, but it's about providing an environment where others can feel comfortable and secure. It's also about leadership, taking the time to put others at ease and thinking before you act. To maintain good relationships with foreign acquaintances, International etiquettes certainly cannot be easily neglected. International etiquette varies widely from countries to countries. What may seem appropriate in these countries may not be acceptable in another. For example, in China, Taiwan, and or even countries of Far East, Beijing is considered as a compliment to a chef as a sign that you have eaten well and enjoyed the meal. Therefore, in Western countries, Beijing in public is considered rude and unsanitary. However, when you visit a country for the first time, you can do some research beforehand, like going on the library or researching it out on Google. In that way, in that way, you can have a pleasant journey without accident. We live in a world that requires knowledge of international etiquette. We often hear people say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do which means that we should abide by the customs of the place we travel to. Thus, in today's increasing global business environment, we, as global citizens, should be fully aware of the international etiquette, which includes handshakes, dining manners, priorities, etc. When we know when to speak and when to keep something ourselves, we may also maintain good good appearance and relationships with important people. On the contrary, we may come across as rude if we lack knowledge of basic etiquettes, which could ruin our country's image, cut off opportunities, and possibly offend the other party. Furthermore, it could harm the bond between countries. In conclusion, having knowledge of basic etiquettes could give us much more advantages and leave good impressions for ourselves. In the future, whenever we travel abroad, it's important that we fully understand international etiquette because every word we say and every act we display will be representing our country. With that said, follow the etiquette and we can create much more potential opportunities along the way. Thank you. 
第二十一对演讲题目是 Number One， 计时开始。Clank with this metallic sound. Chen Jingfeng, the first player from Taiwan in Major League Baseball, hit a homer with a fiery ball towards the cauldron, igniting the flames, setting off the fireworks show, lighting up the Taipei skylines, and putting Taiwan in the spotlight on the international stage. With over 7,000 athletes from 141 countries competing, and a lot more visitors from around the world for the games. The 2017 29th Summer Universiade in Taipei brought the world to Taiwan, offering Taiwan a chance to show the world its vitality, which is exemplified by enthusiastic supporters and its people's friendliness. Though I was not seated on the stadium watching those stunning performances live, the spirit of cheers, go, 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 Taiwan, hooray, on YouTube. Evoked my pride in being a Taiwanese girl. And then and there, I was certain that the hearty echo was heard in Taiwan and, and beyond, beyond Taiwan. Taiwan. In terms of promoting Taiwan internationally, the country's standout quality is, without a doubt, enthusiasm and friendliness of Taiwanese people. Taiwan is a good place to live because the people here are so friendly. Said a Russian volunteer for the university. In Taiwan, the most memorable thing is that the people here are so friendly and helpful. We're so well taken care of," responded two tennis player from Hungary. Furthermore, Samri Morris, an athlete representing the USA and Taekwondo, shared a vlog story of her whole adventure, her incredible experience during summer university on YouTube. Those clips went viral, and were considered an alternative, an alternative approach to publicizing Taiwan. Samri Morris also posted in her blog her three best takeaways from experience visiting Taipei. Number one, clean street, safety, and transportation. Number two, the places to visit are awesome. Number three. Taiwanese people are so friendly. Samuel Morris said in her blog that the locals, whether they are taxi drivers, cash register workers, village volunteers, although she met in random salon, all gave her the same type of kindness, and that was the big reason why she would love to come back and visit Taipei again. As we can see from those athletes, overwhelmingly positive feedbacks. It will be no exaggeration to say that. Enthusiasm and friendliness play a vital role in promoting Taiwan internationally. Now, let me elaborate further on how these standout qualities touch people's hearts. According to International Expat Insider 2016 Index, Taiwan is the friendliest country and the best destination for expatriates. With some 90% of expats giving local residents high marks of hospitality. I suppose no visitors to Taiwan would deny having such an experience. Open their map, and then people immediately offer to walk them to their destination. Truly, the warm, welcoming personality of Taiwanese people is widely acknowledged as a unique international trademark. Here is another sentiment of kindness. An American student, Geraldine Miranda, came to Taiwan as an exchange student. She has spinal muscular atrophy. It's a disease that is characterized by general muscle wasting and progressive loss of movement. Throughout her exchange day in Taiwan, she was helped with her daily care, like grooming, bathing, toileting, dressing, etc., by a group of 20 volunteer NCCU students every day. This once again demonstrated Taiwanese warmth. Ila Formosa. Taiwan's natural beauty drove Portuguese sailors to dub it La Ilha Formosa in 1544. Now, people say that the most beautiful scenery in Taiwan is its people for their friendliness. And that is one standout quality that has impressed people from other parts of the world. That 
is one standard quality that has increased Taiwan's international visibility, as did the, the fireball that sparked, sparked the cauldron in the summer university. Age. Number two. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about the importance of international etiquette. First, let me share with you where international etiquette originally came from. In the 17th century, the King of France, Louis XIV, created plenty of rules to control nobles who were being too proud. These rules are to regulate not only speech and dress code, but also behaviors and table manners. After the European middle class sprang up at the mid 18th century, they learned these rules and acted on them in public. Since then, they are considered as social protocol domestically as well as internationally. As you may experience, we were all taught to be polite and behave good when we were kids. For instance, we have to say please and thank you when we ask someone for help, or we can't open one's closet without agreement because it is rude. These rules, we call them manners, are all based on the word respect, so as international etiquette. International etiquette is just like manners, but more complicated. The formulation of international etiquette is a complex process caused by the differences between cultures around the world. Every culture has its own uniqueness. It may seem different, but the one point in common, they need people's respect. If one doesn't respect others' culture, the consequences will vary in different situations. When it happens among ordinary people, the worst case would be just quarrel or having a fight. But when it happens between countries or in a political meetings, the conflict might provoke a world. In order to prevent the worst scenario, that occurs by being disrespect all those countries, there comes international etiquette under consensus with different intentions from 18th century. This etiquette provides personal security, protect the feeling of others, make clear conversation, may enhance your status at work, and it makes good first impression. Keep in mind that etiquette is meant to be a guideline, not a set of street rules carved in stone. Those guidelines are developmented using common sense, a sense of politeness, fairness, and above all, consideration for others. If you let consideration for others be your final arbiter, you will be well on your way to be the kind of polite person who honors the rules of etiquette instinctively. So next time, when you visit another country as a tourist or government representative, don't forget to bring out the good manners to not only the culture, but also the whole society of the host country. And you will enjoy your visit. This is the end of our speech. Thank you. 第十八队演讲的题目是 number four, 计时开始. Good morning, dear judges. Society is increasingly globalized, with the country all over the world connected to each other. And because the advances on transportation technology, and most of all, the internet, younger generation are growing up in an interconnected, globalized society, including in Taiwan. The young people in Taiwan will need to help to increase Taiwan's visibility and reputation on the world stage. And to do that, we have to increase our international mobility and understanding of the world. And without these skills, 
realizing the full benefits of the globalization will be impossible. Thank you, Bob. There are several ways for people to promote their international communication. One is for people to go abroad to share their uh, to share their uh, to share their perspective, cultural, and different understanding, such as the, the exchange students. The another one is that you can join a local event with international uh, focus, such as the Model United Nations. To join a Model United Nations, youths gather and debate for a global issues. They take in the role and perspectives in different countries. After the United Nations event, people can, can, can have more understand different countries' perspective, cultural, and understanding their, uh, their perspectives. Thank you, Jessica. To be a valuable contributor in an international system, we have to obtain different diverse skills. Language is one of the most important skills that we have to have because language is the basic of establishing conversations between people and people. With conversations, we can share ideas and find common grounds with, with people. And with the diverse foreign language skills, we can travel around the world. We can promote Taiwan, and, and meanwhile, we can learn about different cultures and come back to Taiwan and teach about these cultures to our people. Another skill that is important is to be able to stand in front of people to perform public speaking. To build up confidence in front of large audiences, expositions, or even conferences. The most essential skills that we have to have is to be able to um, perform critical analysis. To be able to analyze problems it's easier for us to deal with international affairs. So these are some of the skills that we have to have while we're dealing with international affairs. Thank you, Henry. <clears throat> In the end, to enhance our global mobility and ability is a challenging duty that all of us must participate. However, for us to acquire enough knowledge to, per to achieve such improvement, we need help from both the government and the educational system. Going on to trips abroad, like um, educational trips, could hone our English ability and broaden our views. Uh, although practicing public speaking seems intimidating and time consuming at first, in order for us to su succeed, it's essential. The journey to enhance our global mobility and ability is not pleasant. However, in order for us to succeed, we must do this. <coughs> uh, thank you. 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 In terms of promoting Taiwan to the world, I think its geographical diversity and unique cultural elements are outstanding qualities. Small as Taiwan is, its geographical diversity is very remarkable. What's more, because it is small, you can experience such a diversity in a few days. In fact, many foreigners visit Taiwan mainly because of the spectacular scenes in Taiwan. For instance, hundreds of mountains as high as over 3,000 kilometers. Hot springs and great canyons in the east of Taiwan are what foreigners long to enjoy. Besides natural environment, Taiwan's cultural environment is also a must you should experience. For example, Aboriginal festivals, some religious activities held by ancient temples, local snacks that are a mix of delicacies brought by immigrants from China are also and local ones that are peculiar to Taiwan. As we know, Taiwan is famous for its geographical diversity. That is the main reason why we should recommend it to the world. There are lots of natural scenes in Taiwan, particularly 
Taroko, Melton Jade, and the lagoons in Tainan. Speaking of Taroko, it's famous for spectacular canyons and cliffs, which were formed by the river cutting the mountains. No one doesn't see these breathtaking scenes without feeling stunned. Besides Taroko, another unique scene are about Melton Jade, which is the highest mountain in East Asia. Taiwanese and even Japanese regard it as a holy mountain. It's a wonderful chance to conquer it. Of course, when you're climbing up to a peak of mountain, you can have a wonderful feeling beyond expression. Moreover, the lagoons in Tainan are very well promoted. It was formed hundreds of years ago when the inner sea in Tainan shrank. Many special marine creatures inhabit them, particularly the migratory birds called the black-faced spoonbill from Siberia. Thousands of black-faced spoonbills there in four are enough to attract foreigners to watch, much more the unique lagoons. Speaking of Taiwan's cultural features, the temple first comes to my mind. There are religious activities held by temples in celebrations of gods. These activities demonstrate the unique culture of Taiwan and attract more and more foreigners to take part in. Besides, some festivals about the aboriginals are what foreigners can't miss. According to this, celebrating the harvest and the rite of passage, you can appreciate the vitality and the energy of aboriginals by taking part in these festivals. By taking part in these festivals. Compared to Thailand and Japan, the number of those who visit Taiwan is very small. There is still room for us to improve Taiwan's image. When it comes to enhancing Taiwan's image, we should present some standout qualities peculiar to Taiwan to the world. In my opinion, Taiwan's geographical diversity that can be experienced with convenience. Aboriginal festivals that are full of energy and vitality. Religious activities that are simple and colorful. And tasty snacks that are cheap and special are unequaled qualities to be shown to the world. If we make great effort to show them to the rest of the world, Taiwan will be greatly promoted. Thus, the number of those who flock to Taiwan will be enormously increasing. Bow. Thank you. Number two, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What makes human beings different from animals? The answer is etiquette. Etiquette is an important part of our daily life. A person who shows proper etiquette shows respect both to himself and to those around him. Some people argue that etiquette are no longer matters and that the rules for be good behaviors are old-fashioned and out of date. However, good behaviors and manners are never out of style. Etiquette, like any other cultural behaviors, evolves to keep up with the times. Without etiquette, members of society will show far too much impatience and disrespect for one another. It would lead to insults, face fights, cheating, dishonesty, road rage, and a rush of other unfortunate incidents. Etiquette is merely like a set of guidelines for politeness and good manners. The kindness we should always treat each other, it will always matter. Now, Maya will illustrate what etiquette is for. 
Thank you, John. Today's Educate service several important functions. Educate provides personal security. Knowing how to behave appropriately in a given situation makes us more comfortable. I'll explain by using straight. First, it protects the feelings of others. Proper etiquette requires that we make others comfortable and protect their feelings. We do not point out their errors or draw attention to the mistakes. Second, it makes communication clearer. Etiquette enhances communication by breaking down barriers, not erecting them. Last but not least, it makes good for impression. The first five to seven seconds after we meet someone are crucial. Our impression lingers in others' mind long after we are gone. So if we use proper etiquette, then our first impression will be a positive one. Now, Izzy is going to introduce what is changing the etiquette in the society. Thank you, Maya. The society and culture are now changing so fast that it is hard for the rules of etiquette to keep up. As quickly as the book of etiquette is published, a new form of communication is developed, and a new style of dating becomes all the range. And someone declares the latest etiquette book, publicly outdated. Keep in mind that etiquette is meant to be a guideline, not a set of strict rules carved in stone. Those guidelines are developed using common sense a sense of fairness, politeness, and above all, consideration for others. If we let consideration for others be our final arbiter, we'll be well on our way to be the kind of polite person who understands the rules of etiquette instinctively. Thank you, Easy. I'll talk about how etiquette help us immerse in global village. Because of globalization and brand new technology, people have more opportunities to contact with the others all around the world. In order to avoid misunderstandings, we should get familiar with international etiquette. Otherwise, it will make you feel like a fool. To make matters worse, you may shame your country. As a citizen in this global village, it is essential to learn international etiquette. Even if our phone language is not good, we can get respect through our behavior and manners. Therefore, the most important purpose of learning international etiquette is the performance of the esteem to ourselves and others. Thanks, Christina. That's a very good elaboration. In a global village, keeping manners is what we should do. The most important spirit is to show respect to others and treat them well. If you can follow these principles, you are turned to the wonderful world citizen. After all, manners make the world go around. One, two, three. Thank you. 第十四对演讲的题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。Bye. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If one has heard of the term globalization, then it will be easy for him or her to understand internationalization and international mobility. According to Knight, this internationalization involves the integration of research, the use of English as lingua franca for academic communication, and growing international labor market for scholars. In other words, it is a process of weaving academic programs, institution, and the quality into global context. Thus, as I do research for this speech, I should assume that traditionally the flow of students has been toward English-speaking countries, such as the United Kingdom, United States, and Australia. According to OECD data, the largest number of foreign students in 2011 were from China. India and Korea. In fact, the Asian student accounted for 53% of all students enrolled in higher education institutions overseas. However, in recent years, China has been trying to become a degree supplier for foreign consumers. Some key universities, such as Peking University and Tsinghua University, believe they are world class. Over the past decade, Hundreds of Chinese universities have attempted to absorb foreign students with strong support from the Ministry of, Educa of Education of China. 
the government published the national outline for medium and long-term education reform and development in 2010, calling for an expansion of cooperation and exchange among institutions of higher education. By 2020, according to the plan, the amount of inbound students in China will reach 500,000. The information above was published in 2013 by the UNESCO United Nations. As a matter of fact, it is safe to say that academic mobility and education exchange across borders has been a central feature of higher education in Asia. It has flourished due to cultural and academic exchange. Educators and policymakers are aware of new opportunities as well as trends. Well then, what should students my age do to increase international mobility? My answer is being equipped with the following four abilities. First, stand in other shoes. For example, there's a common couple therapy exercise that involves describing a topic of conflict from your own perspective, your partner's perspective, and the neutral observer's perspective. It's important that you don't assume that your way of, your way of Second, be able to speak at least one second language. There are tons of tools and tips and even online lessons helping those who want to learn a foreign language. My own tips are, first, focus on learning and developing phonics. Second, emphasize content along with language and linguistics. And third, combine old and new vocabulary. For example, you can attempt reading a children's book you know in a foreign language. The language is simple enough and knowing the story helps you guess the meaning of new words without using the dictionary. The third ability is frustration tolerance skills. Frustration affects all of us individually. We all have experiences. We, we know that it can be an agonizing experience and hard to handle. But as one develops confidence in his or her own abilities, this frustration will begin to diminish. Last but not least, flexibility. That is, learning to cope with change. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace, so employers actively seek out graduates who can adapt to changing circumstances and environments and embrace new ideas. They seek those who are enterprising, resourceful, and adaptable. If one wants to be mobile internationally and handle international affairs, he or she needs the practices below. Stay calm in the face of unexpected difficulties. Act positively in response to changing circumstances. Persisting in the unexpected difficulties is connected to the ability to tolerate frustration. One must be an active participant in this strategy. After all, the ultimate key to change is action. This is the end of our speech. Bao. Thank, Thank you. you. 第十三对演讲的题目是 Number Two， 计时开始。Good morning, honorable judges. Living in today's globalized world with its highly developed technology and transportation, Taiwanese people have more and more opportunities to be in contact with foreigners. As global citizens, whenever we conduct civil diplomacy, following international etiquette is crucial. International etiquette has been around for a long time. Back in the first century BC, the proverb, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, got around fast when Rome became the capital of Roman Empire. In the Chinese world, there are sayings that express the same thought. Both of these enforce the significance of international etiquette. Etiquette is a call for people to follow to avoid offense when interacting with others. Rules of etiquette have been passed from generation to generation and have helped establish structures, graceful and dignified societies for centuries. Therefore, we should try to fully understand the customs of whichever country we visit and pay respect to them or else we may make fools of ourselves or even affect our nation's reputation and cause unnecessary conflict. An incident between a Greek prime minister and the spouse of a Turkish prime minister is a typical example. Just before 2004 Athens Summer Olympics, 
the Turkish Prime Minister and his Muslim wife Imai, led the delegation of business leaders, government officials, and journalists to visit Greece. This visit was seen as a breakthrough in the two countries' diplomatic history since Turkey's last official visit had been more than a decade before. During the visit, during the visit, Greek officials extended more hospitality to them by strictly abiding to them, abiding to them with Islamic conventions. However, on the last day of the of on the last day of a visit, to everyone's surprise, Greece's, of, Greece's Prime Minister Karamanis kissed Imai and hugged her and cheeks to be farewell. What's worse, this image was broadcasted on the Turkish TV and, and caused Turkish people to fear toward Karamanis. This diplomatic Abra only subsided when Karamanis made an official apology. This historical instance is an example of how important international etiquette is. Though it may vary from culture to culture, international etiquette is based on common sense. There are two basic principles to follow, sincerity and respect. First of all, sincerity is the foundation of social interaction. As the Chinese saying goes, sincerity is the way of heaven. The attainment of sincerity is the way of man. Only sincere act and word can show one's cares for others and thus build healthy relationship. Second, along with sincerity, one should show respect for different cultures. Always take a proactive attitude to learn about the core value of the culture you are going to interact with. Some examples of international etiquette are minding one's manners, avoiding asking personal questions, not discussing religion or politics in the public, and avoiding physical contact. As the aforementioned example shows, while it is common for people in Greek culture to bid goodbye to, by kissing cheeks, such behavior is considered disrespectful in the Muslim world. Although the Greek prime minister wanted to share his sincerity with his guest, his disrespectful of physical touch in Islam showed that he didn't consider others' feeling and didn't know the appropriate greetings. Etiquette is the foundation of interpersonal communication. As a global citizen, abiding by international etiquette is an essential way to start of a proper relationship with others, especially the transnational one. Only by understanding the different conventions of different countries, showing respect for them, and sincerely interacting with others can people create harmonious relationships around the world. Number Good morning. With the rapid development of science and technology, the world is keeping going forward constantly. At the same time, the ability of handling international affairs and increasing international mobility is also a significant and urgent topic for the young generation in Taiwan. By virtue of the highly competitiveness in the world, the young generation in Taiwan must make extra efforts to catch up with the pace of the world. In order to increase international mobility and handle international affairs, we have several methods to follow. First, we must have basic ability of foreign language so that we can at least understand what others say and make a simple communication with them. Take English, for example. We can participate in different kinds of activities, such as Model United Nations, 
as members of this organization, we use English to discuss international affairs and find solutions to controversial issues. Through all the participation, we learn, we learn how to express our opinions in English and find solutions to the issues. In order, through the participation, we can also find a solution to many international affairs. In addition to learning English, we should learn language of the target nation of the new southbound policy. In our school, we have additional choice of learning the second language, such as Indonesian and so on. That way, we can build an intimate relationship with this country, cooperate with them without any conversation problems, and increase our competitiveness. Newton once said, reading makes me stand on the shoulders of giants. Therefore, we consider that it is really important for us to make it a habit of reading. Only reading can expand our global vision, cultivate our abilities of handling affairs, and learn from others' experiences. With an eye to knowing what's happening around us, we can read newspapers that talks about global issues and daily incidents occurring in the world. Magazines with different topics in several fields is a perfect choice as well. Nevertheless, we couldn't simply sit back but ponder deeply over those knowledge we gain from books. Reading and rethinking are both significant for us because they can make our world much wider than we can ever imagine. However, what should we do to strengthen our international mobility? In our view, it is necessary for OFS to be open-minded and show our respect to other cultures, even though they are different from ours. By doing so, we can build a closer cooperation with them, because only respect and kindness can roam up the environment we live in and bridge the gap between us. In order to develop the economic partnership with the target nations. Rather than be so urgent to run a business, we should try our best to understand their cultures or even customs. For example, we can, for example, we can offer a variety of food choices for people with different religions. Moreover, Certain principles or regulation can be more flexible for people with different needs to adapt themselves to new situations or places. With respect and kindness in our mind, we believe we can be accustomed to every corner around the world more easily. As a teenager in Taiwan, there's no time for us to waste. We have to take action to turn the tables on what we've been facing right away. We should not only obtain all the knowledge in books, but also learn how to apply the knowledge. We have to give back to the society and the world we live in. Remember, every step and every effort we make can change the world unexpectedly. Thank you. Number four. Good morning, dear judges. Living in the flat world, we cannot deny that globalization is a reality, not a matter of choice. It has brought changes into various aspects, such as how nations and communities interact, how enterprises seek talent across borders, how schools remodel students to embrace innovation, and how citizens, especially younger generation, expand their opportunities in this ever-changing, highly competitive world. Among all that is changing, 
It is essential for younger generation to increase international mobility and abilities to handle international affairs. European Commission once defined international mobility as transnational mobility for the purpose of acquiring new knowledge, skills, and competences such as educational exchange, volunteering projects, and language acquisition courses. By doing so, we can expose ourselves to a wide range of global opportunities and broaden our horizons. As younger generation in Taiwan, instead of confining ourselves in this small island, we should not only keep up with the current affairs, but also enhance our national competitiveness. The following are our humble suggestions. To begin with, take good advantage of modern technology to promote international mobility and voluntary commitment like taking part in international projects through platforms such as iEARN and Vision Youth Action. These collaborative platforms provide diverse programs for future participants with open access. Every stakeholder is sure to learn mutual respect as well as cultural diversity by sharing their own experiences or different perspectives. Most importantly, we can raise cultural awareness and hold a more positive attitude towards the future of Taiwan. Second, put emphasis on such competences as foreign languages and professional skills. We need to equip ourselves with certain abilities to meet today's challenges. When it comes to international mobility, languages definitely play a vital role. An employee with proficiency in multiple languages is definitely what the company or an organization is looking for. Besides English, a couple of Southeastern Asian languages are gaining popularity, such as Vietnamese and Thai. Therefore, with new southbound policy prevailing, fluency in these two languages will be highly valued. Actually, by studying abroad, volunteering overseas, or taking part in working holiday programs, the younger generation can acquire competitiveness and employability, which guarantees us international mobility and the opportunities to live an enriched life. As a member of the global village, Taiwan should seize every chance to get involved in international affairs around the world. To establish diplomatic relations and boost cultural interaction with other countries has been our primary goal. To do so, international mobility truly matters. Currently, many colleges or high schools conduct the project Model United Nations in which students can learn about diplomacy, international relations, and the United Nations. Participants are required to present their opinions or ideas about a specific potential issue in conferences. During the process of researching, public speaking, debating, and writing, students acquire critical thinking, teamwork, and leadership abilities. More often than not, participants can learn much more than they have expected. And that is exactly what every global citizen needs to know. At the same time, our government has also launched campaigns such as Leadership Camp or Youth Forum for young students to develop their own unique personalities, recognize the importance of social change, and cultivate strong, independent leadership skills. Such programs as mentioned foster a creative, critical, and a collaborative environment to develop visionary young people who can influence their communities, whether in Taiwan or abroad. To sum up, in order to increase international mobility and abilities to handle international affairs, we should first take advantage of modern technology and then equip ourselves with competencies that will be valued in generations to come. As global citizens and the future masters of Taiwan, we younger generation should collaborate with our peers from other countries so that we can make a difference to the world. Number two, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As a progress of transportation system, it is common for people to visit other countries. However, 
on account of the cultural differences. It is easy to happen some situations that people may feel embarrassed. Therefore, it is important to learn international etiquette, starting from basic dialogues. When talking with people, you should talk about weather and food instead of religions, politics, ethnicities, and so on. In addition, do not interrupt people when they are talking. Moreover, standing with folding arms is meant to be impatient when you are talking with someone. The most important is good oral hygiene of oneself, or you will ruin the moment because of your bad breath from your mouth. Next, welcome Howard. Thank you, Astrid. The demand of the basic etiquette includes five different types. First, it pays particular attention to be neatly dressed, to tie the tie and keep hands clean. Additionally, people should have a proper dress according to the occasion. For example, we should wear the dress and suit when attending the official occasion. But now wear a jewelry which has loudly sounds. Second, we should have generous, friendly attitude and kindness as, special, as, as well as for energy. And we should match your second rules when you stand. Because it may bring some bad impressions to other countries if you do some improper behaviors. Next, welcome Yvette. Thank you, Howard. Third, you should be polite when talking to someone and pay attention. Besides, do not chat informally. As mentioned above, when we want to start a new conversation, we should choose public topic instead of privacy. Next, follow the rule and shouldn't affect people and respect others. The behavior of scolding and making trouble are considered to be not educated person. Last one, being punctual is very important. Things you promise should keep the word because breaking promise and setting somebody up are so disgraceful. Next, let's welcome Lydia. Thank you, Yvette. Some countries have their special custom, especially taboos. For instance, it is not allowed to, your, to use your left hand to pass gift or food to someone in Thailand. It is considered a misbehavior. Some gestures are not even allowed in some countries. Because of the different culture and customs, the uses of gesture will be different. For example, it means pasty when you are thumb up in some countries. On the contrary, they will have other meanings in other countries, a negative meaning. Consequently, when we are going to visit other countries, we should learn more about their local customs and local culture. Because, and to avoid offending others and arousing meaningless misunderstanding, we should know international etiquette because those are what we should have when being internationalization. And to realize these principles, we will become a global citizen. This is the end of our speech. Thank you. Number four. Hello, judges and all the participants. Today our topic is going to today our topic is how to increase the younger generation's international ability. People in Taiwan, especially the younger generation. Are full of the, are full of the passion and energy. This is something worth of letting the foreigners know. And we try hard to broaden our horizons, so that we can, so that we can be a bridge that connects the world. Taiwan is co definitely competitive. Don't look down upon ourselves. 
Although we have small land, we have big heart. No one can stop me unless I stop myself. People in Taiwan, for many reasons, some are on, vac some are on vacation and some on our business. We are taking care of the first part. We take Indonesia traveler for example, and then happen to be Muslim. Do you know what they don't eat? Of course, eat pork. Yes. So first, during this trip, we we should avoid to going to to going to those restaurants that only sell this kind of meat. Second, the place like Long San Si and Marzu Temple shouldn't be on our list. Third, it's way harder in their countries, so maybe spicy hot pot is their first choice because spicy, spicy food helps this way to gain more appetite. I think by doing so, they can feel how considerate we are. And that's welcome the second part. Some Indonesians don't want to play that much. What are they like? They are rich. They want to make big money. And so do some Taiwanese. So we can take them to the industrial parks in Tainan and Xinzhu, which then they can build up their factories on. And there were many and there will be many opportunities of jobs. That is a win-win situation. Do you remember the mud? Do you remember the job mud? We we got you yesterday. We played as Indonesia and Vietnamese students. And. You can understand. You can understand they. They. You can understand the food preferences is between. Those two countries. It's between. Those two countries. If you are careless, you may make others angry. And different ways of lifestyle may cause misunderstanding. And misunderstanding cause conflict. And conflicts cause extinction. So. So. We think that international etiquette is very important. I have a question. If someone knows nothing about the international etiquette, what, 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 happened, what happened to him or her? Let me tell you, he or she would offend many people. And there's no doubt, he or she can never be so successful. Take Mayor Ke Wen Zhe for example. He once, he once, he, he once turned down a gift clock from a British advancer. And they also let us know that a person can't live without international Etiquette. So we know how important the international etiquette is. Three, two, oh. one. Oh. Thank, Thank you. The third speaker's question is number four. Please start. Honorable judges, ladies, and gentlemen. Good morning. To increase international 
to increase international mobility. Younger generations in Taiwan should be well prepared to face all kinds of problems. First, language skills, especially English. Since English is an international language, we should regard English as a living tool, not only a subject in school. Second, we should be open-minded. That is, that is to accept different cultures from different countries. Like, like Taiwanese students are seldom raise their hands to ask questions and provide their opinions. On the contrary, students from the US uh, share their opinions regularly and are eager to ask questions. And that is why students in Taiwan should share, should, should learn from their spirits and culture. Next, my partner Ashley will continue the speech. To handle international affairs, international field is needed. When we learn about the current news, what we have to do is to think about the impact it brings to our globe and also our country. For example, the biggest terror, terrorist attack in France in 2015 influenced the result of their election. People may tend to choose the far right groups, which will affect the policies to be more conservative, such as immigration, religion, and issues about refugees. Because of this terrorist attack, tourists may decide not to go to France or other European countries. This event also affected the world's stock market, which involved in the world's economy. And due to this terrorist attack, Taiwan also enhanced our safety and make preventions with having Taipei 2017 University. Next, my partner Queenie will continue the speech. To analyze the impact current news brings to Taiwan, it requires our international mobility, ability to other countries' politics, economy, and their features. To handle these international affairs, curiosity and respect are what we need. The world is just like the thick book. We need curiosity to deal with the international affairs, including their values. If we understand their values, we can explain their culture easily, such as the various cultural aboriginals. Many people in Taiwan, in other countries may doubt that why many people in Taiwan like to drink wines. In fact, the, the aboriginals in Taiwan like to drink wine because they want to celebrate festivals by drinking wine. Others like to drink wine just because they want to keep warm when hunting in the winter. Gradually, this becomes the part of culture, a part of custom in their life. After knowing this information, we can easily accept this culture. Next, my partner Irene will continue the speech. When handling international affairs, what we cannot do is to bring our own comment and consideration into solution. It would be much better if we can take other countries' points of view to figure out a better solution. On the other hand, I think having a knowledge of our own country is also important. For example, Taiwan is now facing an embarrassing politic problems with China. China will affect other countries to isolate us. As a result, we are not only handling international affairs, but also isolation. Therefore, I believe Having a knowledge of our own country is also necessary when we're handling international affairs. Thanks for your attention. number four, We, the youth, are the future of this country. If we act greatly, this country will flourish. 
But if we don't, the whole society will become a tragedy. But we love Taiwan. We can't let anything bad happen to it. In order to let Taiwan flourish, we think the most important thing to do is connecting with the wide world. But how should we do this? We think there are many ways to achieve this goal. But the first step has to be the ability to speak, read, and write the English language. To master the English language is important because English is the most spoken language in the world. And when people go abroad, most times people communicate with others in English. Another reason why mastering the English language is important is because it enables you to become an exchange student. To become an exchange student, we think it's a worthwhile and, expe and ex challenging experience. It can increase general knowledge about the world when you have conversations with the local residents of the host country. By doing this, we will become more mature. This is the utmost importance when we wish to face the world. We think most students let's go abroad, make new friends, let's may last a lifetime. These friendships can help you understand more about other cultures. As mentioned before, the English language is the most used for communication with other countries. Therefore, international news is also in the English language. By reading the international news, I learn things about countries in the Southeast Asia that I did not know before. The first impression that came into my mind was that the countries in the Southeast Asia are not as rich as Taiwan. However, after I began paying attention to the international news, I realized that I was wrong. Actually, their economic growth rate has kept growing even at a higher rate than Taiwan. Mostly because of the cheaper labor, the development increases because of the foreign currency country markets. This made me realize that we should always keep in mind we can learn a lot from other countries. In conclusion, all that we do when using the English language can enable our international mobility. But catch on, on, catch on, on the international news Talking to foreigners, we can broaden our horizons. Citizen diplomacy is the key to Taiwan's prosperity. So, to increase the youth international mobility, they must all practice English as much as they can. So, get online, read the news, use social media, and start communicating. Youth. Let's get in contact with the world.